How's it going everybody? So there are a few projects I've been wanting to do for a while that need a press. I've wanted to start making things like sheaths and holsters out of materials like leather and kydex, as well as doing some plastic pressing when I want to work with uh, high density polyethylene. And I've also wanted to start work with doing book binding. All of these things require even pressure when working with the materials. I thought about just buying a press, but everyone that I asked seemed to want money for theirs. And one guy just kept asking me how I got in his shop. I started with these old beams that came from an old pallet that I had. I'm not sure what they're made of, but they're fairly soft. After I cut them to rough length, I decided to go over to the jointer and flatten two of the sides. Later on, I can use these references over on the table saw to get a straight cut. My jointer has a nick in all of the blades, and so I had to use a file to clean it up before each cut. Ellie was also helping me clean. Hello. Over at the table saw, I cut a bunch of boards about one and a quarter inch thick. I needed some panels about 18 by 18, so I used these boards to glue up into those panels. And then I could square up that last side before the glue up. When gluing up these giant panels, I like to glue them up as many as possible at the same time. The trick here is to leave one of the connections without any glue so I end up with two separate panels and not one large one. If I do end up with one large panel, it's not the end of the world. I can always cut it apart on the table saw, but it's a lot easier if it just works first try. To get the glue off, I just use a cheap hand plane and then when I'm done, I can clean up all the high spots with a nicer hand plane. Glue can be a bit hard on some of the irons and I'm not one of those crazy people that enjoys resharpening all the time. Maybe one day I'll have an apprentice that can do that for me. And then I can go over the whole thing at least once with some sanding. The sanding process always ends up appearing a bit sisyphus and on camera, so I'll just skip through most of that for you. I'm pretty sure most of you didn't come here to watch me push a boulder up a hill for all of eternity. Back over at the table saw, I can cut an opposing side parallel to the first edge, and then I can square up the other two sides 90 degrees to that first edge. I ended up going with a 15 degree runner for the supports. These slots are going to ride on the side supports, which are going to be cut at the same angle. After I cut the angles in the panel, I could clear out the middle of the panel with a dado stack. And then I could repeat the entire process with the support beam. And now I can match that same angle on the side supports that the whole mechanism is going to slide around. So this part, I sort of neglected this earlier. I was paying too much attention to the durability of the top support that I forgot about the bottom being under the same amount of force. So I added another panel to the bottom so I could place a second piece of support at the base. It wasn't really that big of a deal, but it would have been a lot easier if I had done this at the beginning before I cut all of my pieces. The whole piece is going to be put together with dowel joinery, mostly just because I think it'll make the project look cool, but it also gives an incredible amount of rigidity to the project when it's done. In the main support beam, I needed a stepped hole for the lead screw and flange assembly, so I cut the final dimension first using a circle cutter, and then I could clear out the rest of the hole with a Forstner bit. And then the last hole that receives the lead screw itself needed a custom fit, so I ground down a spade bit to the same diameter as the lead screw. And then everything else just came down to chiseling out the mortise that receives the flange.
first. Anytime you have a threaded rod going through a wooden hole, it's really easy for the rod to catch the fibers on the back end of the hole. So the best way to mitigate this is to put a small chamfer on the end of each hole. That way all of the fibers are always supported by something. I needed a way for the flange to be held in and it seemed the easiest way was to simply drill and countersink the flange so I could just screw it in place. Alternatively, I could have just made another board to fit underneath the flange to hold it in from the bottom. But I really wasn't sure how long that would last before the flange started getting a bit wobbly inside the hole. So I ended up just screwing it in place and that worked pretty well. One of the more challenging aspects of this project was trying to figure out how the lead screw was going to lift the table from the top. What I ended up doing was cutting a groove around the perimeter of the lead screw so I could attach a washer that I had cut in half. That way the washer would be able to fit around the groove. And then that entire assembly could be captured in place by this wooden housing. I decided to do a quick dry fit to see if everything was working properly. Maybe now it's a little bit more obvious how this whole thing is supposed to go together. The lead screw goes through the main flange assembly and into the housing where it accepts the two washer halves and captures the housing in place. Then the bottom of the lead screw sits on another washer which is also captured by the housing. And eventually the housing will be screwed into place into the upper platen and that should keep everything firmly in place. Hey, who's banging around under my bench? What are you doing? Did you find a spot to hide? <laughs> Cheese! I needed to find a way to attach the lead screw to the arm that drives the press. What I ended up doing was flattening out the sides of the lead screw so it would stay in place in the arm and then I could cut a hole in the arm to match. And here I realized I forgot my clamp. Whoa. This arm is going to eventually have some heavy weights on it, so I wanted to soften the edges just in case it ever happens to whack me in the side of the head while I'm concentrating on another project. Also, I just think these chamfers look cool. It sort of accentuates its ovalness. The last part that needed to be cut into the arm was a stepped hole that would accept a 2 and 5 sixteenths ball hitch. I figured these would work really well as weights. And then on the bottom, I could chisel out a hex-shaped hole to capture the nut. And then the baby apprentice just showed up and wanted to help again. Okay, I want you to watch your fingers. All right, we're going to keep our fingers to ourselves, okay? No, keep your fingers down. Fingers down. Good. Fingers down. Distracted. Do you see yourself? Hi. <laughs> Is that Daddy? And I said there was Dada. And was that Ellie? 
Hello, we're Dada. Yeah, Ellie and Dada. We're with Dada. I want to go to so last time I filmed myself using a stain, I got into a bit of trouble with some of the safety Sally types here on YouTube. Of course, I'm not talking about those of you who were politely voicing concerns, but... A bunch of people got upset because I was using finishes around my daughter, but I always check the back of the can to make sure that it's safe for skin contact and it doesn't release any fumes. This is a pre-stain and it's perfectly fine for skin contact and no, it does not create any fumes. And you'll notice here in this next shot, right about here, I switch over to a wood stain. This isn't harmful to the skin, but it does create a bit of a toxic fume, and it's really not good to breathe it in. So two things. One, you'll notice the baby is not anywhere near me. The baby's inside. She's fine. Also, throughout this finishing process, I make sure my shop is well ventilated, so there's really no issues to worry about. So some of you guys really just need to calm down. On the top layer of the finish, I decided to use a wax for two reasons. This is so that the parts that come into contact slide across each other easier, and it also helps the assembly since the glue won't stick to the wax. I also decided to wax the threaded rods so it would slip across the flange a little bit easier. Once that was all done, it was time to put the pins in. The flat sides of the lead screw are already going to hold the arm in place, but I decided to also put these pins in to make sure that it stays in place. Okay, I'm in the middle of editing this video and I realized I forgot to film myself hammering in the pins. So, there they are. It looks kind of like this. Yeah, that was pretty much it. All of the main four joints of the press are held together with glue and dowels. You can see that the hole in the bottom of this support is pretty low and I'm not completely confident it's going to hold long term. So I decided that off camera I'm going to put some dowels vertically through the base and into the vertical supports. I figure having two dowels going vertically into the vertical support should be a lot stronger long term. When I was in the finishing stage earlier on the project, I was really careful to try not to get any of the finish on any of the glue surfaces since it would keep the glue from sticking. So once everything was lined up, it was just a matter of drilling the holes and then driving the pins in. I decided to make this press in a style similar to the old machinist fly press. I don't think this has ever been done on a wooden press before, but I thought it would be pretty cool to try. Basically the idea is that you can throw the arm in any direction and it'll screw or unscrew the press quickly, and it'll also give you a little bit of easy clamping force at the end of the swing. Basically the reason this works is that it, when you put the weights farther away from the moment, it increases the distance traveled by the arm, allowing you to pick up more speed, resulting in more downward pressure. At least that's how I understand it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm no industrial psychologist, but at least that's how I understand it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think I should make next using this press. Do you guys want to see leather projects, kydex projects? I could do book binding. Let me know what you guys would be interested in and I'll try to make time for it. Just leave your suggestion down in the comments. I'm always looking for new ideas for the channel, so just let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you all next time. Alex Steel action shot. You know what Alex Steel would do? That is flat. <laughs> oh, that is a flat banana.